Bob Ryan is Mount St. Helen during the eruption. He is just so much passion. He's like, I'm a what? What do they got? Who's this madman? Pitching, 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 pitching is what wins. He's a nut. Cheap shot. If you like peace and quiet, you should really go to the game with someone else. He can't help himself. There's going to be some screaming. I care about 2012. You're probably going to get punched once or twice. Bam! The ESPN started filming him here. He was so loud that people complained. And took no Cardinals. You know he I just loves to watch people compete. He loves the games. Just pure love for sport. There's Red, there's Larry, and there's Bob Ryan. <laughs> One man. That's it. End of discussion. Bang, boom, zoom. I was born into a sports-oriented family. There was no, I, there was no memory that I have of, of not going to sports events. My father was involved in sports, in both promotion and marketing, stuff like that. And locally in Trenton, New Jersey, uh, uh, my father founded the local grammar school basketball league. I was a little kid on the manual scoreboard, turning the numbers on the, on the score when I was six. I, that's all I knew. I knew nothing else. That's the way I live. But I read, I read, I mean, we all played, but I read more than the next hundred that kids put together. You know, I mean, I knew the infield fly rule when I was eight. You know, I had a very unusual uh, career in prep school in that I was on the basketball teams always. And then, of course, I wrote on the school paper and became the sports editor of the school paper. So it gives you the exquisite pleasure, if the photo is good enough, of putting your own picture in the school paper, making a three-point play against Princeton High School, which I did. Uh, that, that, but that was me. Thank you. Hello, Dougie. I started uh, at the Globe in the June 10th, 1968. Fran Rosa, the morning editor, came to me and said, you probably thought we forgot all about you, but uh, we got a spot for you. And oh, by the way, you're going to cover the Celtics on Friday night, opening night. The shortened season. And the oh, really? Practice time and uh, a lot of the stuff that went with the season. But that was uh, overwhelming because I wasn't ready. Uh, I could write the basketball to a degree, but the covering and, and, and uh, negotiating yourself in a, in a, in a, a professional locker room, with, and you, know, you find yourself, you're talking to Oscar Robertson. Uh, I wasn't ready for that. Just the, I, I just get so infuriated thinking about 2-3-2 two, two in the finals. It drives me crazy. So, so what's the, it's, oh, geez. Oh. Anyway. I guess you're retiring because you've lost your passion. Well, those certain things drive me crazy, you know. 232 is an abomination unto the Lord. He's a legitimate fan. He's a season ticket holder. He'll watch games no matter what. I do not make any apologies for the fact that I want the teams to win. The Patriots were in the Super Bowl, and uh, Mike Vrabel, who was someone that we both liked quite a bit, had a great rapport with him, the linebacker, he, uh, he went out and caught a pass for a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And Bob Ryan, I'll never forget it, he was sitting just two, two seats over me, he turned around and he went, Mike Vrabel! And he actually hugged me, because he just thought it was the coolest thing he ever saw. Okay. I wanted to win. I wanted to sell, you know, yeah, I mean, when, I, when the Celtics won in 74, was the first, I'd seen this team from day one in 69. I, that was my team. That was my beat. That was my world. And it was important that they win for me. I really, I really liked it. I'm very happy I did it when I did it. You know, I saw the best basketball that you could possibly see, guaranteed better than, you, than anything you're seeing today. The access, to, going to practice every day during the 70s and learning the plays and knowing the offense, I mean, this is not possible today. I sat at courtside, heard the game. He would sit down by the visitor's bench um, and because he learned more down there. I once got a referee threatening to give me a technical foul. Bob would sit with us talking about Larry Bird, his arms flying, all Larry Bird, and Dennis Johnson would, in mid-game, he would dribble over towards us and say, Bob, keep it down, we got a game going on out here. Because he heard me. You know, you're not gonna hear me where I sit now. I am someone who made a living, a, a so-called career rested on the NBA, but 
I no longer enjoy going to a specific game. I don't enjoy the experience. It is work. They made it work. They made it annoying. They made it troublesome. And why? Because you can't enjoy the game. The loudness of the music, they have the meter thing going on on, on, on the Jumbotron. They're telling the people, you know, garden level, all that stuff. The only reason those people went to the game was the hopes of getting themselves up seen on the big screen. When you get to the playoffs, it shouldn't it be all about the competition. Shouldn't the playoffs be utterly self-sustaining? Shouldn't the playoffs require no amplification whatsoever? And all this nonsense is going on at timeouts when people should be talking about basketball. And it's only gotten worse, and that's why it's a good thing for me to be getting out. <laughs> all he does, all he does is make shots. Quincy AC makes shots. But now, but he makes six foot, he makes six foot, he makes six foot shots. He makes that in between, he's, he makes shots. I'm telling you. He makes shots. The sports and the entertainment aspect of sports, people, this is something very important that they can focus on to get their mind off everything else. So I'm kind of surprised at that, but I'm still gobsmacked that Michael didn't go for a Tar Heel. I'll never get over Gobsmacked, that. okay. My job is to enhance that experience for the, for the fan. The right mental toughness and spirit. So uh, and we didn't cure cancer, no, and we didn't, you know, go down and build houses in Haiti, and, and, and I admire people that do all that. But I just think I had a natural thank you gift for this particular, you know, relatively inconsequential skill in life that doesn't change lives, but I think I was damn good at that. I have preached in print, time for you to go, time for you to go, uh, people staying on too long, whether it's, you know, athletes, uh, whatever, huh? so uh, it's my turn. So I've done everything that was meaningful to me for the most part. I, I don't kid myself that uh, I am doing everything at the same level that I once did. I look back at certain stuff, I, when I, sometimes I encounter stuff that I've done. I said, I did that? I don't think I could do that today. I'll see you whenever. Yeah. You search for words or you search for, uh, you know, certain things that you, you used, to come, uh, uh, used to come easier. I don't want it to go any farther. I don't want the waters to recede anymore, so. Uh, how, many, how many mixed metaphors can I throw into this? So, so uh, that's it. I know, I feel in my heart. It's time. Uh, just give me 30 seconds to go grab the, the, uh, the actual grab list. I can't, my computer is failing me at the moment, so I need to go grab the, believe it or not, we, we, ha we print a newspaper here. It prints on parchment. It's, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, and, 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 yeah, I gotta go get it. Hold on.